Hello, how are you doing? Today I'm going to be making some Polish pierogies. And starting off with it, uh, you can see I got some potatoes. You can kind of see a representation about how big they are. Um, just bought a bag of them. Went ahead and uh, with that bag, went ahead and uh, started peeling a couple. Uh, you can see right here, uh, kind of the way I like to do it, I just peel the ends. I've never, uh, this is all kind of self-taught, so I've never really uh, uh, learned how to peel potatoes or anything. But what I do is I peel the ends and then I just go like this. I find it to be the easiest way to go ahead and get the potatoes peeled. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be peeling these potatoes. Uh, I've got seven of them here because some of them are small. I usually do around six. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just boil these till they're ready. Um, I like to do it till I can put a fork in there and they come off the fork pretty easy. And like I said, I just uh, peel the ends of them and then strike it down the middle. Uh, they're boiling right now. I've got my onion. Um, just to also let you guys know, uh, I know you're supposed to use Polish cheese and all that there, you know, pierogies and all that from Poland. But uh, what I like to do is I like to use this cheese. Uh, the reason why I like to use this particular cheese here is, is it, it's kind of salty and it's crumbly. It's almost crumbly like a feta cheese, but yet again, it's uh, a little salty. Um, I, you know, this is, I like the flavor of it. That's why I've been putting it in there. And it's a white cheese, which is basically what you should have. So all the only thing I'm doing right now is I'm going to cut up my onion and I'm going to cut it up in such a manner that it's basically almost like minced. Um, it's going to be really, really, really uh, <laughs> uh, small when it's minced, when I uh, finish it. The reason why I like to do it like that is because it's just, I don't like big hunks of onion. This is a sweet onion, by the way. I know some people put more, some people put less. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mince this up. Once I'm done mincing it up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, then go ahead and saute it in the pan uh, with butter. Just, yeah, good old-fashioned butter. Okay, you know? now you can see that uh, basically why I've been going ahead and finally chopping my onions. What's happened is I've been cooking my potatoes. My potatoes are already cooked. Remember not to... Throw away that water from your potatoes. You gotta save at least two cups of that water. So we're gonna save those two cups. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna throw some butter in here. So that way I can go ahead and saute my onions. Uh, remember, it doesn't have to be pretty, but you want plenty of butter in there. Uh, this is the one part that isn't all that great because yeah, we're using butter. I know everybody's trying to be healthy and I guess you could use olive oil or whatever you wanted to use if you want to use something different. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat on. All right. And go ahead. And I, I just happen to like this particular butter, so that's why I'm using it. But I'm going to let my butter melt. And as my butter is melting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in these onions, saute them, brown them up. And once they're all nice and brown, then I'm going to pull them back out, hold on to them, mash my, mash, or my potatoes with the butter, uh, sauteed onions, mix in my cheese. Now I'll just crumble it all up, throw it in there, mash it all up, mix it all up, give it a really nice good flavor. That way I put those in You the see I've been cooking the onions. Um, you saw how many I started out with when I had them in the plate. And you see how many are in here right now. Uh, <laughs> same amount, never didn't take any out. Um, it just, yeah, it cooked down a little bit. So, yeah. Um, I had butter in there. I did put too much butter in there. Uh, you can see, I mean, these are pretty pretty finely chopped. Um, of course, you know, the water cooks out of them. They reduce in size. Now I've got my that. potatoes here. You can see there's a little steam coming up. They're nice and warm. Got my cheese. I'm going to crumble my cheese into there. And so I've already opened it up. Make it a little bit easier for me. Just throw that in there. You can see how it, as, it, as I break it up, how it just kind of crumbles. So it'll, it'll mix well. It, it, well, if I get it all in the container anyways. But you can see how it's all crumbly. And so what I'm going to do is just, like I was saying, just kind of break it up into here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix it up with the onions in here. It's all nice and warm. The potatoes, these um, potatoes will actually start to melt this cheese a little bit. Yeah, I'm like, I got some like cheese that's trying to make an exit here. There you go. 
but you can see once again crumbling just crumbling it up Woo, man I'm shooting it all over the place here's Dang, my well. onion onions put my onions in there Dump them all in there. So they're all in. And now I'm basically just going to mix it all up. You can see how it looks in there. And what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and mix it up. Let me see if I can go ahead and move this camera a little bit better position for you. You're probably going to get a uh, really good view of my my arm too as I'm mixing it but just want to kind of show you just doing nothing much more than mixing it up mixing it up it's like you're making mashed potatoes actually last time I made these I had a whole bunch left over and that's exactly what I did with it is I put some milk in there and went ahead and now mashed what potatoes is making the dough what I've done is I've put uh, about four and a half cups of flour in here um, I always end up adding more so rather than just starting off with four I just start off with four and a half because it's gonna get in there anyways and to that what I'm doing is I'm gonna add some uh, butter it's like two tablespoons of butter well maybe a little bit more but uh, I'm adding the butter to it put it in the middle there now I'm gonna add some sour cream A little sour cream in there. Let me rinse off my spoon. So here's one big one, another big one. Maybe that's why I keep on ha always having to add more to it. So that's that in there. Putting the uh, sour cream back in the refrigerator because I don't like my sour cream warm. Nor should you. And then I've got two eggs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the the yolks in there, but not the whites. So as best as I can. I'll crack it. And uh, let me just kind of go, I'm kind of just going back and forth trying to grab the, uh, the yolk out of there. Let everything else kind of pour out. So there's one yolk. Throw this away. And on the floor, my wife's gonna kill me now. Damn, hope she doesn't see this video. She just eats them, she doesn't really watch them anyway. So, I guess it's all good. Once again, crack the egg. Uh oh, yeah, this one's cracked, so it's going in there like it is. Cool. All right, well, now I'll clean up the floor in a minute. Uh, I've been cleaning my dishes between each and every every round, so no biggie. I've got the butter, which I put two spoons. I just melted it because it makes it a little bit easier. I got two egg yolks and two helpings of the cream cheese. Now, what we were waiting for earlier is I've got two cups of the potato water. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. I'm not going to pour all of it in there. I'm going to reserve a little bit. We're going to mix it all up. Yeah, I know there's other cooks out there that can do it better than I can, but uh, I'm just a one guy learning how to try to make this. Trying to mix it all up. It, uh, it, it, it makes a really good dough. Um, not that I'm like, you know, Super Mario dough maker or something like that. But it makes a nice light dough. Um, I ended up just uh, on my countertop, I've got granite countertops. And what I end up doing is I just put, you know, flour the countertop and start what mixing gonna do it is up. I'm going to go ahead and, and the area that it's on right now, I'm going to go ahead and flour it all up and start rolling the dough up. Just prior to that, I'll let the dough sit for a little bit. Let it sit so that way it can work its magic. So next thing you'll see is this dough basically ready to come out. I'll finish mixing it up. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm getting ready to go ahead and mix my dough up now. Um, get my hands covered with some some flour. Just pull out a little bit at a time. So that way I can roll it. And man, this is uh, 
The one part that I really don't like about this is that, man, this stuff is gets sticky. Well, it's dough, so what do you expect? Here's my working area. I uh, kind of pull some of this extra stuff off of my fingers, push it back into the dough. It's been sitting for a while now. I actually let it sit for a little bit longer um, than what I would normally because I was checking on some eBay stuff or whatever. But anyways, um, and this right here is my rolling pin. It's not a traditional rolling pin. Um, what ended up happening was I decided one day I was going to make some of this stuff. And when I went to go make it, I realized I didn't have a rolling pin. So what I ended up doing was going out in the garage. I had a piece of uh, black ABS pipe. And I threw it. Threw it down on the, went ahead and start rolling it out and uh, cut it to size. And actually it works really good. I'm quite surprised at it actually. Works really good. So basically what I do is I just use this to roll the, roll the dough out. Not any great big secret. You roll it out until it gets uh, eh, maybe eighth inch or so thick. starting to stick a little bit unfortunately the first one or two batches that I do it's always a little uh, sticky oh man I didn't pull up my little sizing cup also what I do is I use a cup to size it it's gonna be right here I've already washed it but I didn't dry it so let me grab my towel and dry it because it's got to be dry obviously this is supposed to be done, yes, of course, before, but uh, this is my my size cutter here. I just put the cup down on there, turn it, and that's it. I like to make sure that it's got lots of flour on it because what happens is the first ones, for some reason, the first ones always don't come out that well. But I think I did a pretty good job of uh, grabbing it out of there, making a small, making it small and pretty. Uh, Flowery. The first ones also, um, later on, you can kind of, as you're putting them on top, you can kind of like fold them on top of each other as you're uh, storing them, getting ready to uh, fill them. But these first ones, man, I would suggest just putting them down. And don't do that because what ends up happening is that they don't really like that for some reason and they tend okay, to Okay, what I'm doing now other. is I'm going to actually make the kolaches. I got some of my dough that I... I might have to do this one first. But uh, I took some of the dough that I had, that I had cut out. And now what you're going to do is you can take a, I use a fork and my fingers. Just take a little bit, stick it on there. Don't get too much because if you put too much on there, it'll end up blowing up the kolache for, um, did I have been saying kolache? Pidogi. Uh, it'll blow up the pidogi for you because uh, when you start cooking it, I mean, it, it, it'll, uh, you don't want to, or uh, putting it together, you don't want to tear on you or anything like that. So, this is just me putting some filler on here. So that way we can go ahead and start closing I'll these suckers I'll take this one. And you want to, and I'll just flip it over on itself. Kind of push the edges down to each other. Pinch it and fold it. 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 The reason why I do that is uh, one, it really helps the kolache to stick together, and two, it's uh, I guess a little decorative flair, I guess if you uh, want to kind of. So when you're eating it, it makes it look a little bit more special. I've got my water boiling already, so that way when these are ready to go in, I can dump them in. And I'll take you through that too. So uh, once again, just fold it together. This one's better because you can see some of the first ones that I made or some ones that I didn't have quite as much dough on, dough flour on that I maybe should have. And uh, see, that one looks a little bit nicer. It looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some of these pierogies. I'm going to dump them in there. Not too many at a time. The reason being is if you dump too many of them at a time in there, they let down the temperature of the water. I'm taking the ones that were the most 
gentle from before the ones that were yeah didn't come in now that great and then I'll take one that you can see that came on half decent let me take one more that came on half decent you can kind of see the fold on it fun in there so those will start cooking and what happens as they're cooking is that once they get to the point where they're cooked they start to float the only thing is I like to move them around a little bit on the bottom of the pan because if you don't then they tend to stick so you could put a little oil in the water or whatever but um, they tend to stick if you, you don't take precautions on it okay you can see that the pedogies are boiling uh, you can see that they're floating and this is what you're looking for you're waiting for this to happen and that lets you know that they're done when they're done they start to float like this what I do is I like to get a uh, plate I'll grab a plate pick them up shake them off a little bit that's how I collect them out of the bowl or the, uh, the uh, pan of boiling water and then I put them down so that way they can cool here you can see I've got the pierogies cooking in olive oil uh -huh. rather than cooking it in butter which is more traditional what I do is I cook it in olive oil so that way it gets the outside all nice and crunchy I like it crunchy on the outside typically just a little bit of browning is what it normally is but uh, we like it uh, crunchy on the outside I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done okay now you see the pierogies they're all cooked cooked them in olive oil you can see how they're kind of a golden brown color uh, we like them that way makes them a little bit more crunchy uh, when you eat them we also got a uh, a sauce to eat in one that we dip it in and on the particular sauce is basically uh, like a uh, sour cream and a also it's a, a chile or a uh, a red salsa and green salsa in there mixed together and it makes a nice little spicy dip y'all have a good night